Hello, my name is Sean, and this is Embracing Salvation. Um, you can reach out to me at embracingsalvation2019 at gmail.com. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So my wife needed, told me to make sure that I added in there that, men, your responsibility on pregnancies does not end with the woman being on birth control or what she's doing. So be sure you take your responsibility also, even if that means taking care of a child after it's born. Um, and I do thank the person who reached out to me and asked me this question given the previous podcast, um, and that was, do I believe that racism exists today? And unfortunately, the answer to that is yes. Um, there's been some horrible things done in this nation in the name of Christ, in the name of justice. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry for what's happened to our ancestors. That, that happened, in, and it was more than, than two ethnicities that were involved in it. There were many ethnicities that had to live through the horrors of slavery, um, had to pay the price of freedom. What I'm asking is, is, can we begin to forgive for that? You know, I hear a lot of preachers and, and a lot of Christians talk about uh, give, and it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When, but they're always talking about finances. When the scripture right before that says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Um, can, can we forgive ourselves? Can we forgive each other? I, I know some horrible things were done and, and, and I do thank God I was not there to live through it. I'm very thankful that I was not there to live through it and didn't have to partake of it. I thank God that I got the benefit from what people had to lose. Um, but today we're facing another crisis of slavery. Our, the, the children of this world, not, not just American children, not just whites, not just blacks. Ethnicities from around the world, children are being stolen and then sold as sex, sex slaves. Can, can we forgive each other for the past and deal with the present? and stop from 200 years from now having to try and make this one right? Thank you for your moment. Um, I'm going to read several scriptures and then I'm going to talk about them just a little bit. Uh, first one being 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 6. But this I say, he which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that minister seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And... I'm going to actually read that entire chapter. You must understand that in the last days there will come times of much trouble. People will love themselves and money. They will have pride and tell of all thing, the things they have done. They will speak against God. Children and young people will not obey their parents. People will not be thankful and will not be holy. They will not love each other. No one can get along with them. 
They will tell lies about others. They will not be able to keep from doing things they know they should not do. They will be wild and want to beat and hurt those who are good. They will not stay true to their friends. They will act without thinking. They will think so much of themselves. They will love fun instead of loving God. They will do things to make it look as if they are Christians, but they will not receive the power that is for a Christian. For the, of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. <coughs> Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, <clears throat> what persecutions I endured and cut, and but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In Jude... He makes a point of saying that these men have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And something that's been bugging me for a while now. Uh, we're constantly told by other pastors, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to name anybody. You know who you are. And this is an opportunity. God's calling out. It's an opportunity for you to repent. But I'm, I'm just going to ask some questions, make some comments. Um, I'm, I'm real curious how a $5,000 suit is helping you to preach the gospel more effectively. I'm real curious how when you have to, when, when you're telling me that I need to sow seed, most of your scripture is wrapped up in he that sows bountifully. Um, but you also mentioned in there that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Um, are you calling me wicked and then telling me I need to give my money to you? Uh, and, and let me give you an example. I've got a good friend of mine I talk with a lot, a lot. And, and his pastor sows. And don't, get, don't misunderstand me. I, I don't disagree with sowing seed. I don't disagree with, with using money to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, but is that what it's being used for? And if so, why can't I use that in my neighborhood and, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ and let them find out how much God blesses them, not because of what they gave, not because of what they did. There is nothing in this scripture that, that you can purchase. You can't afford none of this, especially with money. Um, anyways, this friend of mine, he, he's been struggling financially for a long time. And uh, he tells me all the sermons when his pastor preaches this great sermon about how you're going to receive from God and, and stuff. And don't get me wrong, again, I receive from God. God has, has shown me bountiful mercy in finances, in, in life itself, in accidents where I could have been seriously injured. But this man goes to his pastor and, and he tells him, you know, pastor, he said, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting my mortgage payment made. Uh, uh, I've been three months without electricity, but, I, but I'm still giving my tithe. I'm still giving my offering. I'm still sowing seed. 
And, and please, don't misunderstand me. I'm, I'm not against any of that. That's why God gives us extra. This particular pastor, when, when this man has went to him on several occasions to tell him how hard of a time he's having, um, just always puts his hand on his back and he said, hey, God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And yes, God will take care of him. This pastor has made the comment several times about how much money he has, how he lives debt free, how his children um, probably will never have to work if they don't want to. At what point in time do you sow into this man's life from the harvest that you've received? Or do we sow, if I've got all the money that I'm ever going to need and that my children will ever need, do I just sow into other people who have enough money to pay for what they need to do so that they can keep their money? I'm just asking a question. Uh, do we start taking care of those that are in the church? Because that's where judgment starts. According to Scripture, judgment starts in, in the house of God. Um, don't know how well this is going to go over because the guy filming the camera, I've already seen him drop his head and shake it. Can't believe he's going there. <laughs> um, you know, it's... It's a hard thing. But Scripture tells us that some have crept in and sought our freedom. And then they exploited it. They found out how, how caring Christians are. How loving we are. How compassionate we are. Christ said that if I came in my own name, you would have received me. But because I come and represent someone else, you, you, you hate me. I'm not saying that every pastor who, who flashes his name and all the ministries that are in their names, I'm not saying that they're evil or speaking of themselves. I'm not examining you. I'm asking you to examine yourselves. That's what Paul said. I get why some of them maybe did it all these times where they've left their families to, to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ about the salvation of God through Jesus Christ, how to be forgiven of your sins. This is not good versus evil. This is righteousness versus evil. This is holiness versus evil. Um, I don't believe any of us have attained that. I, I don't think there's a person living that have attained that. Do I have holiness? Yes, God said that he'd make me holy. Have I attained it? No. Do I have righteousness? I have the righteousness of Christ. I am the righteousness of Christ. Have I attained it in my life? No. But it's not me that, that, that can. I can't do it. Um, whether I had done any of the horrible things in my past or not, I wouldn't be righteous as far as God's concerned unless it's through Christ Jesus. Um, some of the scriptures that you'll never hear, some of those pastors preach how those who, who seek riches pierce themselves with many sorrows. Yet, if you need more money, send me some as a seed and, and watch your harvest come. Um, and I'm not saying the harvest haven't come. I'm not saying I haven't seen a harvest. But sowing into good soil, if you read that, that whole scripture where he's talking about the sower, the seed, and the soil... The soil is your heart. If I'm sowing seed and it's financial seed, I'm sowing it into somebody's heart. No, I'm sowing it into their life. The Word of God gets sown into their heart. That's the seed that Christ is talking about, is the Word of God. It's not money. Money's a tool. And, and you'll hear a lot of preachers say that money's a tool. If it's a tool, why are you holding on to so much of it and why do you keep on telling me how much of it you have and then ask me to send you some of mine? I don't live debt free. I, I don't get to travel around the world and tell people how to be debt free while they're giving me their money. Um,
or they, I, I don't hear the scripture about giving to the wealthy man over there. In fact, let me turn to it. Proverbs 22, 16. <clears throat> Give me just a second, please. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Settle it for yourself in your own heart. Are, are you doing what God called you to do? That's fine. That's great. If, if you being a multimillionaire is, is what God has called you to be, and, and you know that in your heart? Great. Hope to have more than enough money in my wallet one day to be debt free, to be able to take a vacation without having to wonder if, if uh, we're going to run tight at the end of the month. It's okay. I'm not upset with rich people. Live your life through Christ. Help those who can't help themselves. I thank you for your time, and I hope you share this video.